Hello, we are Geeks Assembled. This is Audio Heads, and we have re- we have uh, switched into sort of the Christmassy kind of way, and we've got Torchwood the Crown, and it's kind of like a PG wooden house uh, um, ghost story, really, and it's pretty spooky and it's pretty fun and it's set at Christmas, so it's, it's great. Uh, and Lee's here with me and uh, oh, and and one other thing about this story, it doesn't contain any of the the modern uh, anybody since um, since Yvonne Hartman forward, it doesn't contain any of those people. It is in Victorian times. And of course we have Her Majesty Queen Victoria. Anyway, go ahead, Lee. What's your opening thoughts on, on The Crown? Um, I, I enjoyed this because um, I listened to this last year because it came out December of last year, I think it was, just in time for Christmas. And um, it's a good, what was it, an hour, just over an hour long, tale of um uh set say set in winter at Chris, on christmas eve um in as you see in victorian times but also in an asylum um <laughs> and it's a tale about a curse um a coronet yeah cursed coronet um torchwood of course and which was set up by Queen Victoria yep. in the world of Doctor Who, um, played by then Pauline Collins in Tooth and Claw. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, Rowena Cooper has played Queen Victoria for the audios for a few times now, but she's playing an elder Victoria. Yeah. Um, I kind of got that. Yeah, yeah. She's, uh, she's, playing, she's playing Victoria in her in her latter years, shall we say. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty damn good story. Uh, as you say, for, for, for me, and it, it does say at the end of this uh, stuff in the disc, there's a little talk talk to the um, director and producer and the actors at the end of this. Um, and the writers said they wanted to write something like M.R. James. M.R. James, not, to, not P.J. Woodenhouse, sorry. Yeah. Who is well famous for writing short ghost stories back in the day, um, usually set at Christmas time and stuff like that. Um, um, and they do get the feel of that. You do get the feel that it's the, the sort of it, he has influenced this, the writer in this story. Um, yeah, it's, I love anything set in Victorian times. Uh, I've said it many times before. You know the cobble streets. The warehouse, the asylums, um, and this is a pretty damn solid tale, to be honest. I mean, there's only four four actors in this. Um, oh. Yeah, uh, Queen Victoria, Doctor Maddox, um, not uh, Mister Maddox, Doctor Pa, and Doctor Pa's wife. Yeah. Uh, but it all comes down to this is, as we call it, entrapment. As you found out at the end of the story, it's all been entrapment. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was good to sit down and listen to it again. Um, and it's, it does feel Christmassy when you listen to it. Yeah. I mean, I mean you've got the, the ferryman, the ferryman sort of poem or whatever yeah. it is, the song they sing, um, which makes you, which she draws you into it more, into the story. And yeah, good, a good tale. And who's it written by? Uh, Jonathan Barnes. Uh, he's done a hell of a lot. He has. Um, he is quite prolific. Yes, he is. And, um, and this is one of his best, I would say. So that's my opening thoughts anyway. Well, great. Um, yeah, the ferryman... Uh song or whatever uh went something like this the ferryman stands in shadow and waits the ferryman giggles and hungers and hates 
the ferryman comes to carry away all who behold the crown and disobey. Oh, yes. And, and I just, you know, you, you hear the ferryman and, and I think of that song by, oh, that don't, don't pay the ferryman. Was that, um, was that Krista Berg? Krista Berg, yeah, that's right. <laughs> don't pay the ferryman, don't even, yeah, that's right. And, uh, um, <clears throat> and I loved how they, uh, <clears throat> he referred to <clears throat> Her Majesty as Deary. <laughs> I picked right up on that for obvious reasons. Um, and uh, the, the admonition to take the crown mm. was good because she already was wearing a, a, a you know, uh, sort of a man, even if it's not on her head, it's on her head. She's already wearing a crown, right? Right. No, no. Right, right, right. And uh, and uh, the first time we see Queen Victoria was in David Tennant's Tooth and Claw, like like you were saying. And um, you know, he was a he was a big fan and. Um, and so you get a little, uh, you get a, it, it, this one's a bit like that. It's it's a bit that kind of uh, tale. And I mean, I, I, I just, I think that that's fun too. And um, let's see, what else did I say? Uh, oh yeah, and then back in that day, uh, torn limb from limb, uh, she was being chased and stuff by her own family member. So I mean, the the the, the royal family in Torchwood uh, set, sense is uh, is a supernatural family. They have uh, they 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 are werewolves and they're cursed and they have all these things and and it's pretty brilliant anyway. Um, so. Uh, yeah, what's your favorite moments? Well, there's, there's quite a few. I mean, I love the because she's she's sat in the what do you call it the padded cell in, yes. in, in um, talking to um Dr. Parr, explaining what happened to her. Um, you know, she was thrown out on the streets. Uh, people, because people didn't see her. She woke up, you know, after seeing the ferryman, um, and people were just looking through her like glass. And that till there, you know, she was, she was on the streets begging for food, begging for money, and then she ended up in the in, in the asylum. Um, Lee, we, wait, wait just a moment. So um, yeah, I mean that that tale where she was thrown out of the palace and said she ended up in the asylum, and then you found out at the end of it, none of it was true. Yeah, she was as I say, it's entrapment <laughs> because of Doctor Parr being a, a, reb, a, reb, a rebel, um, anti monarch, monarchy. An anarchist. Uh, yeah, an anarchist. Yeah. Um, it was all a ploy to trap him. Um, to <laughs> uh, it's just a shame that, as as the Queen, as, as Victoria says, it was a shame that they had to involve his wife. But uh, yeah, it, it was all it was all a torchwood ploy. Yep. To, um, but it, it does draw you in. Um, and the. The, the the part where the ferryman is making an appearance with the imagery they give you, you know, um, all in green, um, teeth like um, granite, um, really long claws, and with the, with the bells on his upturned sh sh shoes, it just just it, it just drew a, a brilliant picture in your head of what what the ferryman was like. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's it's a it's a brilliant story. Um, I mean, also there's a connection that Doctor Gideon Pan, played by Derek Riddell. The connection, you, you know, the connection with him, don't you, and Victoria, and Doctor Who. Nope. <laughs> what, 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 what was that? Well, Derek Riddle, who played Doctor Gideon Parr. In oh, the he was he was the he was the werewolf. Yeah, no, he was he was the uh, he was the Lord in Tooth and Claw who sacrificed was... himself to save the Doctor and that lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. So oh, he. Yeah. He had a connect. He had a connection. So his connection with Victoria who went back to Tooth and Claw. Now he's in this with another Victoria. <laughs> we yeah. talked with. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, for a for oh. a, a for a small cast, of four people, um, it's a pretty good story. And as I said, at Christmas time, just you just get that feel. You got to have a ghost story at Christmas. Yep. That's and true. This is a pretty, pretty damn good one. Yep. And for me, um, Rowena Cooper is just amazing. I, mean, I think she's played Victoria. I could be wrong. I think four times now for the Torchwood series series on, on audio. Oh. I, think the, I think this was the last time she uh, she played her. But um, brilliant actress and. You just you just say she just drags you in, you know the, and you do get the feel that she is a powerful monarch. Yeah, uh, she is the uh, Empress of India, <laughs> as she kept saying. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I enjoyed it. So that's my that's my um, and uh, bits on it. Over my favorite you. my favorite moment uh, has to be when. Uh, when the ghostly voice is offering her the crown and take the crown and she puts it on her head and everything changes. Yeah. I, I just lo I love that, that moment a lot. And then I love the, the moment where the, um, where, you know, they're describing the, sort of the, 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 the asylum and they're walking through it and stuff and they hear the, the people uh, they hear uh, no voices because there's nobody there yeah uh, what did um, Maddox say oh, they're all asleep they're all asleep <laughs> yeah sure like the story yeah it, it was a really good entrapment. It was a really good, uh, uh, you know, ruse to to draw out an anarchist, uh, a republicanism. Uh, yeah. Anyway. yeah. So um, uh, those are my favorite moments: uh, the the quiet asylum and the and the um, take the crown, the ghostly voice. Anyway, uh, yeah, you're right. Um, Derek, what's his name? Uh, was totally um, was Derek Riddle. I remember that now. And um, and the other thing that was great was um, was the the way that they described how she was how she was. Um, losing her her power or whatever yeah that was you know that was really a compelling anyway uh yeah so um those are those are my favorite moments and uh anything else about the crown yeah, it, it's just it's so by the time you get to the end of it, it and you you learn out the truth, you learn the truth, um, and Maddox uh, Pa 
it's just a bland panic races back to his wife and it's too late yeah he's overcome by the power of the crown and and released the ferryman um and that's the end of those two really um the, the ferryman gets them um yeah but then you re- say then you realize i've said it earlier on but then you realize the story what victoria was telling pa all the way along was lies and lies. Yeah. It's all lies. Maddox was a lie because he was the Torchwood architect, the archivist, should I say, archivist. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't an asylum um, keeper or anything like that. He was, <laughs> so it was, it was just one big ploy to catch, to, to, to get rid of one person. Yep. And, and, and Merry Christmas to all. <laughs> <laughs> but it just shows you how ruthless Victoria and Torchwood can be. Yeah, I, it was it was a, a, a specifically aimed at destroying enemies of the crown, basically. I mean, and then it makes you then it makes you wonder. How many times have they done it before, or how many times will they do it after this? Because there's not, you know, it won't stop at one. Right. Yeah. So it just makes you wonder how many times they've done it. It's it's it, it, it does make you think <laughs> how um, conniving Victoria is. <laughs> yeah. Controlling. Yeah, and how and how uh, and how they they're used basically utilizing the uh, the supernatural or the un, un uh, otherworldly to to basically make her make her you know kingdom uh, you know run smoothly. You know, yeah, yeah. They're just utilizing all that that stuff, and and so you you see why you you see why Captain Jack had to get involved back back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what makes me wonder is because Queen Victoria set set this the Torchwood Institute up. How much of uh, influence has the royal family got over Torchwood all through the years? Oh yeah, that's a really good question. Because surely the control of Torchwood would have been handed down through the royal bloodline. Yeah. You know, Victoria would have passed it on to the next. Yep. But, uh, are the royals still an influence on Torchwood today? Huh. Who knows? Who knows? And and are they still? Are, is there still an an element of of werewolfism? <laughs> wasn't wasn't one of the the one one of uh, William or Harry's kids born with uh, on on like October thirtieth or? 31st. I don't know. I don't know. I thought a minute that I thought he was going to say born a werewolf. <laughs> yeah, well, um, maybe William or Harry is a werewolf. You know, maybe that's that's the uh... Oh, you can't say it. Off your head. Um <laughs> okay. Off to, okay. Off to the tower. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but maybe maybe um Big Finish could develop that, maybe. A, a modern day Torchwood with an influence of a royal. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't always have to be Victoria, does it? No. So. Prince Charles. <laughs> yeah, let's have Prince Charles in, in big finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Her Majesty, why she's still alive at, at 132. Yeah. But, uh, 
Has she become a vampire? You may never know. <laughs> we'll, let, we'll tell us. I know. Uh, we've got a big thumbs up as well to the director of this, Lisa Bowerman, of course. Yeah. Uh, Bowerman power. Bowerman power. She uh, and and you know the like like those guys uh, have so much you know have so much uh, breadth of experience with telling stories. I just love that that this is super. Um, yeah. Did you, did you get the Christmassy feel about it as well? Because it, it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't Christmas. Really, wasn't mentioned in the story, right? It wasn't. It wasn't. Part, the only thing that I thought of that was Christmassy was like the 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 shoes of the of the ferryman reminded me of elf shoes, and yeah. the fact that he was dressed all in green. I mean, setting it on Christmas Eve, and um, you know, c c c coming out to get Doctor Parr because, you know, he sent the servants home because it was Christmas Eve and stuff like that. And it just set the store up and then you got the feel of Christmas. Yeah. Um, and then you, you just involve a sort of a little strange supernatural ghost story with it. And it, yeah, it, it's just that the, the middle part, the, the, the meat of the story wasn't about Christmas. And you said it was M.R. James that, that wrote stories like that, right? M.R. James, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, you know, casting the rooms and um, whistle, and I will come to the um, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got a book of it somewhere. Cool. I can't remember where it is now. Very good. Yeah. Well. Um. So, what? What's your? What would you rate this? And and. And are, do you have any f final say? It's, um, I would recommend this, um, even listening to it on Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve night, just with the lights down low, uh, get the feel of it, you know, and maybe some of her audio dramas or ghost stories just to listen to on audio. Uh, and this can be one of them because it's very good, atmospheric. Great tale, um, great acting. Um, and I don't think Torchwood Audio is recognised enough, to be honest, because uh, everybody goes on about the Doctor Who audios, uh, you know, and things like that. And, and Torchwood seems to get pushed aside sometimes. And the writers and directors are producing damn good stories for Torchwood. So we do. I agree. Um, they need to, yeah, they need to be recognised a little bit more, I think. Um, so, on that note, I'm going to give it 10 little green ten shoes out of 10. Nice. Little bells on the end. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it, is, it, is, it is a really good ghost story, and it's really, really... Uh, it's really interesting um, how how Rowena, you know, it, Cooper sounds uh, very regal and stuff. And for that reason, I will give this ten coronets, ten mystical coronets out of ten. Take the crown. Yes. And uh, also the 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 little. Uh, rhyme was was awesome. The ferryman stands in shadow and waits. The ferryman giggles and hungers and hates. The ferryman comes to carry away all who behold the crown and disobey. Yeah, it was a good entrapment. It was really creative. It was it was Jason Bourne. Uh, it was uh, James Bond. I don't think it was high up ten as those. Right, right. It wasn't. It wasn't high. It, it was a good entrapment, though. And, oh yeah. Uh, and they figured out a way to use the supernatural to to uh, aid and abet the crown, aid and abet the the royal family. Anyway, really cool. Um, 
And I agree with Lee. I think that it was that in all of the, the audio adventures, um, Torchwood doesn't get enough enough credit. It, it goes a lot of different places. Um, I, I've loved the ones that I've listened to. And, uh, and you know, Lisa Bowerman is an amazing director. She, she knows how to captivate and capture, you know, people's attention and, and, and tell a really great tale. And um, I know that the writing is is there and and the directing is there, so it's just it's just fantastic. Anyway, um, so uh, thank you, Lee, for joining us for Torchwood the Crown, and thank you guys for watching our podcasts. And please subscribe to our podcast and hit the like button because if you hit the like button, we get a we get a little boost and, and people see us more and that's fun. And then um, the other thing that, that, um, that you can do is you can join us on social media. Please do join us on social media. Come, come join our Facebook group and uh, yeah. And, and then let, let Lee know if you're, if you're interested in joining us on these podcasts, all you gotta do is have a cross have a crown, uh, a, a camera, uh, a microphone, and a crown, a crown, a crown. <laughs> and be 18 year old. <laughs> because we do, if, we're, yeah. if we are doing Torchwood, at times Torchwood gets a bit risque, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, so we, we, we do talk about a lot of the, the sexy stuff and the, and, the, and the violent stuff and stuff. And, and then uh, join us and and hang, hang, hang out and have fun. Uh, another thing that we'd like you to offer is, is that you, you follow Lee on Instagram. Just follow him because, you know, he's, he puts out all the information about our podcasts that are coming up. And, uh, and then also please uh, do Twitter. We're on Twitter and you can re uh, retweet our, our tweets and, and share with the people who have made these great audio adventures and, 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 and television shows your, your opinion and stuff. And then, and, and they get involved that way. So we're, you know, come join us. Um. <laughs> yes. Put the crown on the head and the, the, the little pointy shoes on the feet and, and join us. Anyway, thank you, Lee. And uh, oh, and while you're while you're subscribing, hit the bell for notifications, and we will uh, we'll give you a little um, a little heads up every time we've come out with something new, and that's probably once a week, uh, or twice a week, or even three times a week, and we'll um, and we enjoy uh, you know premiering those, and so thank you all. Have a great day. And have a very Merry Christmas from us and Torchwood and Geeks Assembled. <laughs>